All right, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Deputy Commissioner Tariq Shepard, Deputy Commissioner of Public Information for the NYPD. Obviously, we had a major incident that took place right across the street from the courthouse today. Our, we just spoke to the mayor, Eric Adams, and we spoke to the police commissioner. They both updated. And uh, today, you're going to hear from our chief of department, Jeffrey Madry, who will update you on the incident that took place. You're going to then hear from the fire commissioner, Kavanaugh, on the condition of all the people that were involved, their medical conditions. And then we'll have our chief of detectives, Joe Kenny, and he'll talk to you about the investigation uh, of the incident today. So with that, I'll bring up the Chief of Department, Jeffrey Madden. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Shepard. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm gonna try and talk loud so you can all hear me. But at 1.30 this afternoon, right here in Collect Pond Park, which is directly opposite of a New York County criminal court at 100 Center Street, where the trial of former President Trump is currently taking place. We observe, we observe a male walk into the park he walks to the center of the park. When he's in the park, he starts shuffling around his clothes. He opens up a book bag. From the book bag, he takes numerous pieces of papers, uh, pamphlets out. He throws the pamphlets throughout the park. And then he pulls out a canister and pours some kind of liquid on himself, a liquid we believe is an accelerant, and he lights himself on fire. The male, he takes a couple of steps while he's on fire then eventually falls onto a police barrier and falls down to the ground. He's on fire. Uh, another area in the park where some of the accelerant spilt is also on fire. Civilians, court officers, members of the police department, they run into the park. Uh, they make efforts to put him out. They use their coats. They use fire extinguishers. Eventually, FDNY responds. We're able to uh, put the mail, extinguish the fire. And from that point, we will remove him to a Cornell burn unit where right now he's there in a critical condition. At this, uh, at this moment, I'll let our fire commissioner talk about the condition of the male and the condition of people who also helped and who are witnesses over there. Commissioner. Thank you. Uh, as the chief mentioned, the uh, victim is in critical condition but is alive and intubated at Cornell Burn Center. At this time, there were four, uh, three NYPD officers and one court officer, so four officers who had minor injuries from their exposure to the fire. They are all fine, they are stable, and they are green tags, which is minor at this time. Uh, we were on scene, as the chief mentioned. Um, EMS did treat and transport the patient, and we do have our fire marshals here helping with the investigation at this time. Good afternoon, everyone. So the, the male that's involved in this incident, his name is going to be Maxwell Azarillo. Right? He's a male. He's born in 1987. His driver's license indicates that he's from St. Augustine, Florida. What we know from speaking to other witnesses and family members is that he arrived in New York sometime uh, earlier in the week. Uh, we have his car being in St. Augustine, Florida on the 13th. So anywhere, anywhere between the 13th and today, he arrived. We spoke to family members today. They were unaware that he was even in New York. As the fire commissioner stated, he's at Cornell Burn Center right now in likely condition. So the accelerant that was used, it appears to be some kind of alcohol-based uh, substance that's used for cleaning. And that's all we have right now. So why don't we go right down the line, left yep. to right, and just uh, we'll decide who's going to take what. Uh, I wanted to ask you about security. Obviously, there's a, a, a pattern of all the officers. Are you going to be putting more officers? What does this change the strategy of what the protocol was before? Uh, listen, Mark, at, after every incident, we have an uh, after action, and, and, and we'll talk about if we're going to add officers or not. But just so you know, we had a lot of officers in the area. Uh, the It is open to the public to still walk through the park, and so it, there was no security breach here at all. Uh, Eric Thurston. The pamphlets seem to be propaganda-based, uh, almost like a conspiracy theory type of uh, pamphlet. Some information in regards to um, Ponzi schemes and the fact that some of our local educational institutes are, are fronts for the mob. So a little bit of a conspiracy theory going on here. Uh, Rocco, Chief, any indication if he was here in the talk earlier? No, we're going to go through all August video, but what we've seen so far today, it appears that he walked from Leonard Street, he entered the park, walked uh, into the middle of the park and committed the act. Uh, Donald Miles. Uh, Chief, do you uh, speak with the family? Did they give you any other insight into his mental state 
Very preliminary in, in dealing with the family so far. We just made notification to them that the incident had taken place. Uh, right back there. How concerned are you that somebody was able to get this far in, light themselves on fire? Obviously, you said they're in critical condition right now. How concerning is that with all of the law enforcement around? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, we're very concerned. Of course, we're going to review our security protocols. Uh, this gentleman did not breach the uh, security protocols. The park was open to the public. But of course, we're going to look at everything and with the magnitude of what's going on around right here, we'll reassess our security with our federal partners. Uh, like I said, we're going to go back. We're going to go back to the command. We'll talk to our federal partners and we'll make decisions. If we need to tighten up security, maybe we'll shut down the park. This is something that we'll determine once we talk with all our partners, with the court officers to make sure that with everything going on, the gravity of the event going on right now, we make sure we'll have ample security. All right, Anthony DiLorenzo. So from the video and from eyewitnesses, it, it took a few minutes for the police officers to get there, to get their hands on fire of signatures. Was there no FDNY presence already here because of the obvious person inside the courtroom? And is that something that maybe the FDNY wants to revisit in case there is some sort of another emergency like this where EMS or fire would have to respond immediately? Because it took police officers to use fire extinguishers. So, so Anthony, I'll give that I'll give a piece out to the fire commissioner, but obviously we're working in partnership with courts, FDNY, all of the city agencies that, that need to be over here are, are here. But you gotta also remember the park's open to the public. So there was no reason for anybody to already have a fire sting on, on standby. Nobody knew that this guy was about to light himself on fire. So two minutes is a pretty quick response time uh, to be able to get to a vehicle, get a fire extinguisher, run around, get into the park, and start trying to uh, extinguish this fire, all right? But uh, as, as far as FDNY resource, I'll let Commissioner Kavanaugh just talk about what she, what she may want to do. Yeah, as they mentioned, you know, obviously we'll work with NYPD to review what happened and if an additional resources are necessary, we will place them here. But typically for any kind of major security event, which this is, we have additional EMS resources on scene. Um, fire only sometimes or usually is not a reason for that, as you typically would not have next to a public park. But we will work with NYP to review that. I would have to confirm what time they responded. We'll get back to you. But we do typically in any kind of high security event have more EMS resources on scene because there could be patients for any reason. All right, we're going to do two or three more. Not everything that you see right here is part of the plan. Uh, there's a large security plan for this, and trust me, when we had our meetings before this took place, we met with FDNY, EMS, we met with our court partners, we met with Secret Service, so uh, I'm not quite sure uh, what else you're looking for. Well, an ambulance, like, on standby. Yeah, EMS, EMS and, and, and FDNY are in the area at, uh, doing, this, doing this trial as well. And they've, they're totally aware of what's going on, and our response time today w w was pretty quick. Max, that's it. Um, did the man, did the, did the, did we know if the man said anything during, before, during the incident? So you want to talk about? As of right now, what we're showing is that he just walked directly into the park and began to, to throw the pamphlets in the air and then lit himself on fire. We're still, that could be come out during our investigation. We have a lot of witnesses here. A lot of people are coming forward. We, we hope if more people come forward, we can put a little more information together. But as of right now, we don't have that he was making any statements. Uh, Tim McNiff, CBS. Yeah, we're looking through his social media and what he did online prior, and it appears that he did post uh, something in regards to this event prior to the incident. Dan Rivoli. That's going to be my question, but uh, to, to go off that up on the internet posting for something like this trial, when you're gathering intelligence, with social, is social media something you do look at? And um, you know, obviously, I think one of the things we're looking at is the Substack post saying, I'm the man, you know, paraphrasing, but I'm the man who set himself on fire outside of Trump. Yeah, all, all, all of his social media is going to be scrubbed. Obviously, we didn't know him prior to this incident. Um, 
I, you know, from I could talk for about the detective bureau. We didn't know him prior to this incident, but going going back now, part of the investigation, all his social media, uh, any associates, we'll, we'll be looking at all of that. Is there any connection between this guy the At this point, like I said, very preliminary. We don't have that. Emily, we'll as of right now, he's considered likely, uh, which means he's he's very critical. His condition is not good, uh, but as of right now, he's still alive. Shana, are you aware of any prior disturbing incidents involving We're looking through that right now. As as five minutes ago, before we started this press conference, I didn't see any criminal history in New York. I know it has been asked yet, but I just want uh, uh, Commissioner Daughtry to step in for a second and just talk about what he did immediately after to make sure that the area is uh, is safe. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Shepard. Immediately following this incident, I requested the bomb squad to come. I wanted the bomb squad to uh, search this area for any type of, uh, any possible secondary devices. They're actually doing this right now behind me with K-9 checking all the vehicles. As of right now, there has been no additional devices found. Uh, there hasn't been any devices found, I'm sorry, in regards to this incident. So we'll be continuing to uh, search this area. And as far as your question about uh, enhanced security procedures, uh, we're, we're gonna take that look into this. Maybe we may have to shut this area down, but that's something that we're gonna do. We're gonna have a uh, conversation when we get back to One Police Plaza. Thank you. Yeah. All right, last couple. Can, can you talk about, um, just reiterate, what personnel you have on site right now? Yeah, we're not going to talk about uh, specific numbers, but obviously we're working with numerous city agencies and our federal partners over in this area. Obviously, we're working with courts. We're working with the Secret Service. We're working with sanitation, whose building is right here. We're working with FDNY. So there's a lot of city agencies that are part of this, but we won't discuss what, what number of personnel we have out here. All right, last, last, last two. We're not going to share a conversation that we had with Secret Service, but everyone involved in the trial inside is aware of the incident that took place outside today. Last one. Oh, so who do you want? That's on the investigation, but I'll let Chief Kenny talk about that. Yep. As of, as of right now, on August camera, we have him walking to the park. That doesn't mean that he didn't either take the train here or come here, uh, you know, via a car. We do have a vehicle identified that's connected with him. We're currently searching for that car. All right, last one. All right, last question. Yeah, so the man was seen by multiple people carrying a sign that appeared to be someone anti-Trump. And earlier this week, you guys blocked off barricades for Trump supporters protesting and leftists. And I noticed that he lit himself on fire on the Trump supporter sure. side. Do you have any reason to believe that he was targeting Trump supporters? As as I think everybody who stepped up here said said earlier, we do not believe he is, uh, this was targeting any particular person or any particular group. We just, right now, labeling it as a sort of a conspiracy theorist, and we're going from there. But the investigation will continue. Thanks All right, everyone. thank you, everybody. Thank you for your time and attention. Thank you. All right, everyone, you are watching live now from Fox. The update there from NYPD on that situation that played out earlier with the man in critical condition.